uh, hi everyone so I'm actually recording this video so I just wanted to sort of like uh, go down to this this particular thing that I actually wrote um, today so uh, and it was actually just a kind of random thought that just came across my mind while I was reading my stuff and I was also watching a video by um, this 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 actually this coach and all this not coach but it's more like a uh, I won't even say counselor it's actually more like a a men's men's relationship um like um yeah some kind of a coach or whatever but the the, the thing is this he he doesn't per, he doesn't pertain to actually uh by yeah by the name of Rich Cooper he doesn't actually uh pertain to be a so called you know like psychotherapist which is a uh, very much the thing but some of the things that he said uh in his podcast like in, when he invites real like real like mental health professionals and even not just mental health professionals but even uh other coaches and everything so it just kind of made me realize and things that because well, some of the things that he he said were actually from the perspective of males the men okay and of course he was also asking some of the other men like uh who were uh, like asking them about you know like were there other like telltale rate I mean in in that particular program there was one program one episode where he said um we'll say something about the the relationship flags not not relationship flags the red flags yeah the four personality types we should avoid so uh, there were quite a few uh, including he didn't just he didn't just mean in terms of romantic relationship but he also meant in terms of people that you um uh, allow near you. Okay, that would be like for friends, for friends, for business, for work, even for work, things like that. And um, one of the guys give a really, really creepy uh, analogy of that. Not analogy, an example of that person who gave a very blank stare or something that during, that was during the a men's retreat. And it felt like it was Jeffrey Dahmer. or was like, oh damn, Jeffrey Dahmer was like a psychopath serial killer so and and then was like oh dear this is not good but <coughs> so the thing is this uh, they were all saying that uh, the one thing about all these people regardless of their gender male or female <laughs> okay or uh, whether it's uh, in the context of romantic relationships uh, friendships uh, acquaintances and even business and work and everything even things anything in life uh, and as I mean one of that that the coach was talking about that and then um, yeah, it was kind of scary, and uh, one of the guy that 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 guy who gave the Jeffrey Dahmer vibes, where it was like he was kind of like shifty, and the way he looked at everyone, and uh, no one really trusted him with the kind of situation where let's say there's uh, gonna be like a uh, guns around, uh, it could potentially lead to someone getting hurt. So it was uh, yeah, it was really that creepy, and uh, uh, yeah, the the main thing is the eyes, but. I kind of realized this, you know, the thing is that my friends, one of my friends would probably uh, try to argue and say, she said that she used to tell me once, I told her once, do you realize that um, I was going back to the whole idea that people who are toxic and possibly narcissistic, they, uh, they do evil things and they don't sleep well. And she said, yeah, but I don't sleep well. Does that mean I'm narcissistic? She was trying to make a point. Said, no, 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 I'm not talking about correlation versus not uh, versus cost. I'm not, it's, like a, it's not really a chicken egg question thing that I was talking about. But uh, I was just telling her this is was just one of the red flags. Okay, it's one of the red flags. Not necessarily that everyone who doesn't sleep well is a, is a like a dangerous person. But back to this whole thing about what they said. Uh, one of the few things that they were saying. Um, there are many other things and that they were talking about in terms of the personality types, types. And uh, of course, everything um, revolved and went back to the person of Amber Heard. As you all know, what Amber Heard did to Johnny Depp. Uh, I, I I guess that like, he's gonna go down in history as the only man who won in an argument with a woman, <laughs> uh, because I mean, maybe literally or legally, yeah, because he had he had the resources and people who was standing on his side because he wasn't the narcissist, unlike Amber Heard. Okay, even if even in any case, you know, despite what people say about him and about his uh use of whatever um narcotics or whatever or or all this you know recreational drugs. I mean, the fact is, the one lying all along was still Amber Heard. She always has been the narcissist. Okay, so I just trying to get 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 to this point of like, how how do we know if someone is really just someone you need to actually avoid? Okay, it's really something that I think is quite insidious, especially in the case of covert narcissists. Uh, I've talked about this before. That you know, the covert narcissists they 
are very good at flashing their trauma. It's so so adept. They're so adept, yeah, because you can tell you can accuse them of being narcissistic. You know what next thing you do is I have a I have a psychiatrist or a psychotherapist doc letter saying that it's actually PTSD. But but you know you get a point? Now that you don't have MPD or you don't have HPD, which is histrionic personality disorder or borderline personality disorder, now you're flashing this thing called trauma, PTSD. And you know one thing? PTSD is not a diagnosis. There isn't a real diagnosis for PTSD. That, okay, there are diagnostic tests uh, indicating high levels of stress or PTSD, but there's no such thing called PTSD as a sickness or illness. So that, that's a real problem when it comes to PTSD because in effect, most people can actually go through PTSD. It's not like only a few group, of, few groups of people. So, uh, and and the thing is, the irony of this is that if the person is using PTSD as an excuse to justify their you treatment of other people, doesn't it become a form of flashing in itself? You know what's a flasher? A flasher is the one who goes around in places like parks, uh, at night or whatever or elsewhere, and they they might be wearing something from maybe they like a coat or what maybe they're not or but in the end they just show their little thing down, the little brother down there between their legs, you know, their little ding dong, okay? So, I mean, some nowadays with social media, you know, have a lot of these kind of people and they, they say, oh, they take off all their clothes in the park and they take photos and then they say, they brag, oh, you know, I escaped the the, the censorship and the thing, I mean, the people who brag about that and all thinking, I don't take them seriously once they start doing that and it's like, they, they keep on testing the waters of the law. <laughs> regardless of where they are at. I was like, I was like you're not filming OnlyFans, but you're film, you're doing this like, you know, on, on Instagram and posting it out there. Oh goodness. Uh, I I think I will take you with a pinch of salt as a person after that. Okay. So, but, but, but back to the whole thing about personality types, no, no red flags and everything. Uh, how do we even know? And how, how do we even know when we've got to just cut them off? Okay. The thing is, I've said, as I've said, Covert narcissists and all these toxic personality types, which are very discreet, are very, very smart. They can pretend to be victims. And when they pretend to be victims, they just, you know, it's like the victim, the victim, who, the victim who, the PTSD trauma, the CPTSD is their whole, whole bunch of excuses for them to uh, talk badly about other people. But they never even go, go as far as to, you know, take a look at themselves and realize that they are the real common denominator, denominator in all this. So, what is the way to deal with all this? You know, one thing I always tell my uh, myself, I'm, I've just kind of recently realized this myself. Uh, yesterday, I, thought I was talking about the whole thing concerning, uh, you know, to know whether it's good or bad, just, you know, broadcast the thing. Imagine that it's being broadcasted for the rest of the world to know, in maybe in a newspaper or a magazine or the TV show. And if it's really not not good, as in it's socially being panned as something bad, obviously we know it's bad, Okay. Um, that's that's just trying to harness the, the the power of shame, the social power of shame, okay, to work for us as the potential victims and, and targets. But there's something else. Uh, I think that this is another form. This is another technique. Let me let me just explain a little bit that the technique that I was thinking about was to imagine imagine okay that the person the person okay, uh, especially in the case of a romantic relationship or even a very close friendship okay or if not even close friend even even an acquaintance let's just let's just say that okay you imagine okay the person you have children in between the two of you okay uh, this applies especially in the case of opposite sex uh, context but uh, if it's not opposite sex the opposite sex even even if it's the same sex like a friend or whatever i mean it's the same thing okay um imagine that you have some children, okay, some children uh, between you, either between you and the person or you have children yourself, okay. And imagine that the person is treating the children, your children, okay, the same way that they are treating you, okay. Will your children like, love it? Love it, okay. And I kind of realized this with a lot of people, especially when I started, started doing this count. It's a, it's a form of mirroring projection. In, it's, in, in a fantastic, it's, very, it's a fantasy projection method. Um, and I realized that when I do that, actually some of these people, they probably would treat my family very badly by, the, by that definition of what they, they were doing to me. Okay. Um, and obviously my nieces and my nephew, I have nieces and nephew, uh, one nephew. 
and they are pretty old by now most of them okay um one of them is in uh, the first i think two of them are in the first year or second uh, middle school and the others are in elementary school and uh, one of them is in kindergarten but um either way kindergarten or nursery yeah so either way the thing is this they they are all like at least five or six years old okay and the thing is are, are, are older than that and the thing is that if i if i were to allow these people near my so-called nephew and my nieces and let them treat them the same way that they treated me i doubt that my nephew and my nieces will actually love it they will probably be running to their their moms and their dads okay and i realized oh it was at the point suddenly suddenly i realized oh wow so these people are really really assholes or a-holes or or bitches and and i can't realize oh no this is not a good way to do to do actually allow i shouldn't allow them and unfortunately as you know uh most of this like mental health like professionals and like psychotherapists uh almost almost all psycho psychologists will just tell you the only way to leave people who, who are like that who are very abusive and narcissistic is actually to sneak away yeah and you can't tell them that you're leaving because you tell them that you're living you make life hell a real burning living hell for you they will do it okay for example uh, i just realized that this um she used to be a coach for all these things like in narcissistic abuse but now i think she's move on to other things like kim Said, yeah uh, she was in a this supported this this in India for a few years on this, on this kind of spiritual retreat with her then husband or, or or yeah or partner who turned out to be very abusive and and obviously what happened was that um, she 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 actually told she actually has been saying on, on I mean she had been saying on a lot of uh, you know videos that basically the only way to leave is to actually sneak out okay you do it when no one when the other partner who is abusive is not aware maybe when they're outside they're at work or they are somewhere else okay on the overseas trip whatever just leave without telling them because you will tell them they will hunt you down okay it's like taken they will i'll hunt you down i'll find you okay no no you don't want to do end up in the kind of situation uh, i knew that uh, with the situation of my the ex groomer eight years ago uh yeah i could have been hunted down okay it was scary my friends always say you know like is there a reason why you 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 even entertain all these people i didn't even really like any of them to begin with i realized it's like my, my first impression was i mean as i said in earlier videos just, i was just really really scared for my life at the point in time you realize when you're not financially stable and when you are also emotionally kind of raw in the sense that i just ke i just came back from i had just come back from um from australia and and i was trying to go back again to find a work find a job there or work there okay to or to study something and but it didn't pan out in that sense but uh but now i can't think think about it and i realize so sometimes some things will still god will still actually turn them around for for to to, to make things work out for us uh which is why i'm actually now uh doing this this particular uh, part-time not part-time it's like uh, it's a part-time job in uh, some university but but you know it's still better than uh, than them back in, uh, being back in australia because i remember that i wasn't very happy but 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 that kind of experience you know with all the things with narcissistic abuse and realizing oh no all these people they have you intentions and everything just made me realize you know i wasn't able to read these people and i didn't know how to actually read them so yeah the one thing that i as i always say is we need to learn how to read people and reading people sometimes you can't read them at the beginning is the signs are not always there but as time goes by you realize that they will start telling on themselves okay so and yes people will always tell on themselves they cannot hide forever okay so you can run but you can't hide and it's just like a sun the sun will always be out and the fact is that you know the thing is this i have had some people like all this um in my sometimes in my posts in my life they would make some kind of blatant false accusation saying that i'm misogynistic um whatever uh you know if i'm misogynistic i wouldn't have any female friends my family would hate me my mom and my sisters but they're fine with me and my nieces are perfectly fine with me okay my i have a lot of like females in my family they're all perfectly fine with me okay and I still get along pretty much with opposite sex. Okay, there's no issue. Okay, 
the only, only issue is with those very toxic feminists who are always out there to blame all men for everything so uh, unfortunately i think that they themselves are the ones telling on themselves uh, they are telling on themselves that the fact is they just want to get into an argument so when they actually start accusing me of different things uh, such as stalking <laughs> have you looked in the mirror like you know i don't think that anyone is attracted to you you like a man okay uh yeah and and it's funny and some of them like you know during, especially during the amber head trial i remember there's one or two posts saying that you're making miss out is because you side with johnny depp uh, I didn't realize that you're that woke, but uh, you know, I don't deal with people like that. It's a red flag. It just shows that you're out to get uh, into a fight, okay? And I don't, I don't, I just don't even entertain these people anymore. And one thing that I think Rich Cooper was saying, you know, use the yellow card thing, you know, yellow card, red card. Yellow card is one more chance, you will do this again, out, red card. But I said, no, red card is <laughs> red card immediately, okay? Anyway, I'm off to just get my dinner and I hope everyone has a good night. Uh, I'm going to have to do some work. I mean, I've been working quite hard recently because uh, of my new job and everything. So, and the, the thing is, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. The whole thing about that job thing. Uh, I don't like talking about work, but uh, because I like to separate my stuff. But I kind of realized that I, I did an incident with that particular job, that how I got it, the process. Reminded me of my own emotions dealing with uh, the whole situation of, you know, like the aftermath of the PTSD and narcissistic abuse, everything. But uh, and but but that's another thing. I, I don't want to just talk about it now. Now I just want to just talk about how to watch out for that particular red flag and or things like how to know that we, how to actually know when we need to cut off someone. Okay. And the that best way is what I was saying. Imagine that you have children and imagine that they are treating your children the same way that you, they treated you. If you don't like it, <laughs> as the parent, <laughs> you definitely are not going to allow them near you, are, are you? Okay, so okay, that's it for now, bye bye.